I always enjoy speaking to entrepreneurs to learn about what drives them to innovate. My guest today actually traveled from Beijing to Seattle in order to appear on the show. Join me today as we speak to Peng Zhao of Madeira Cloud. Jeff, you may have someone who's come many, many miles from Beijing, but I've got someone who's traveled many floors to come talk to us about localization. We'll chat with Sabrina Wigley later in the show. Welcome to the AWS Report. Yeah, happy to be here, Jeff. Let's talk a little bit about you and about Madeira Cloud. So tell me a bit of a sense of your background before you founded Madeira Cloud. I work for a series of companies, uh, a company called Platform Computing and Reuters. And the recent job before I founded Madeira Cloud is where I work for China Mobile on their cloud. Uh, they, they, they had a uh, cloud initiative product called Big Cloud. I was responsible for the IAS uh, product. So you founded Madeira Cloud. What were you thinking? What were your, your thoughts, your philosophies as you created Madeira Cloud? Uh, the, actually, the, the, the initiative is from very simple ideas. Uh, I, think, I think visualization is a very important tool for human beings. Right? The command line tools is good, the API is good, and people use it a lot. But when it comes to how things fit in your brains, it always visualization. The human brain is, built, is born for diagrams, not for, not for some, some command line tools. So you really thought that the visual aspect of your product was very important? I think they make it easier for people to understand the cloud and make it uh, prettier for them to, uh, to actually get into the, the cloud. Tell me a bit, if you could, about the, the usage and the design process. How do customers get started with your product? Right now, we, st we support the user to give us the, their AWS credential and the, to design their uh, infrastructure from scratch. Uh, so they basically uh, log into our web website and uh, uh, leave their credentials there, and they can start to design their their infrastructure template like uh, CloudFormation. But rather writing the JSON in the JSON format, they design it in a uh, visual way. What you see is what you get. Uh, then they can provision actually provision the, the the template they designed. And but we are also working on uh, another features like we can import the people's resources and help them to kind of reverse their setup, but not really automatically. What kind of implementation technology did you use to build this? Was this JavaScript? Was there more code on the server, more code in the browser? Uh, the backend is mainly Python. And the, the previous version of our uh, front end is called, we call it IDE. It's a flex-based based IDE, but we have a new version. It's purely uh, JavaScript-based. It, it should have much better performance. I'll be right back with the second part of our interview. But first, let's check in with Lee. I've managed to find Sabrina in the hallway, and we're going to chat with her about localization. Thanks for joining me, Sabrina. Thanks for having me. Tell me about localization. What's the process? Uh, well, localization is the um, process of adapting content for other uh, cultures and regions. So of course, translation is a large component of it, but there's also uh, some re-engineering that can go on. Uh, sometimes you'll actually customize content if it's more appropriate um, for other cultures. So for example, if you have a website, you might change the layout or the graphic design, colors, fonts, et cetera, to be more appealing to whatever market that you're targeting. What languages do we have uh, content in? Uh, we localize our content into simplified Chinese, German, Spanish, French, uh, Japanese, Korean, and Brazilian Portuguese. And how many of those languages do you speak? I speak um, German, French, Spanish. Um, I also speak Italian, Japanese, English, of course. <laughs> nice. Any funny translation mishaps along the way by chance? I probably shouldn't talk about too many of them, but um, I do remember one case where uh, it didn't actually make it onto the site, thank goodness, mm -hmm. but a uh, French translator, um, they were supposed to translate the term setup wizard, you know, launch the setup wizard. And for a wizard, they put the word sorcier, which is actually a wizard, as in a guy <laughs> with a tall hat and a magic wand. Nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. It was great having you on the show. Doitashimashite. Prego. Bitsushin. Or you're welcome. Shishia. Mei Wen Ti. Welcome back. Let's keep going. What kind of uh, feedback or ideas do you get from your customers? We have just put the HTML5 version online, so it's in the trial, trial beta. 
uh, but the, so far the performance, uh, the feedback is very good. As people say, it's much better than the Flex version. But uh, they're also uh, demanding more AWS service support. What parts of AWS do you currently support? We support EC2, EBS, VPC, ELB, and uh, we are working on RDS support. And in the future, we want in the near future we want to support a trusted advisor or something else. Could you tell me a bit about the state of the ch Chinese cloud computing market? I think the Chinese market is due several years behind the, the, the Western market. Uh, I can give you an example of that. The people, the user of Chinese cloud, use the cloud in a way they treat it like traditional VPS. They don't really use the API to manage their resources in the cloud. Rather, they use the web console or the command line tools to manage their resources. But I think the Chinese market has, in turn, stage will be a very big burst in one or two years. Do you see developers interested in learning a lot more about the cloud and about how to make use of it? Yes, I do. There, there are some Chinese mar uh, startups doing business in the international market that they use the AWS in the Western market, but they, they learn how why the cloud is good for them. So they want the same thing in Chinese market. But unfortunately, there's now a mature and very big uh, reputational uh, cloud provider in China yet. Do you find that your customers really start their AWS usage with your product, or do they kind of move to that over time after they have some experience with AWS? I think more often it's the later later case because customers already, a lot of users already have their uh, resources in the cloud. And what kind of directions are you thinking about for the future? We are integrating more like third-party services onto the, our consoles, like we are integrating third-party monitor services like uh, CloudWatch or New Relic or Dynamic and other cost management service, Trusted Advisor or Calability. Uh, and also we are integrating the DevOps tools capability onto our ID. So you are not only provision those resources, but they have a way to configure the resource the instance. I really appreciate you taking this, this uh, making the long journey to come here today and uh, appreciate the time you've taken to speak with us. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. This has been the AWS Report, and I'm Jeff Barr. You can follow me on Twitter, read my blog, send me a comment, and follow along. Thanks for watching.